This is the second in a two-part series on creating a web UI control for spectator participation using a mobile device. In this section, we'll view some possible configuration scenarios for implementing the UI, including the pros and cons of each design. We will review using port forwarding only, reverse proxy, or Wi-Fi captive portal as possible configuration scenarios. The quality of the equipment in the network will affect security and administrative control of the process, so let's review some critical devices. The firewall should be very robust and offer good administrative control. An open source firewall like PFSense is a good choice. This software can be installed on an old computer or Raspberry Pi. It is also available pre-installed on various devices that can be purchased online. PFSense allows an administrator to monitor open ports and block nefarious packets while allowing normal traffic. It is good practice to create multiple isolated networks or VLANs in an environment. Devices may be connected by one or more unmanaged switch for each network with one switch from each network connected to an isolated LAN port on the firewall. Another configuration is to have one or more managed switch with groups of port configured for a different network or VLAN and a trunk port from the switch connected to a LAN port on the firewall. A capable outdoor access point is required for one of the connection scenarios. The Ubiquiti UAP is a good option because it allows for five VLANs, a captive portal, and access scheduling. Now let's take a look at the different connection scenarios for the web client. Port forwarding is the simplest approach. It requires a firewall rule that redirects traffic on a specific port to the server hosting the X-Lite scheduler. In this scenario, the spectator is provided with a domain name that resolves to the firewall. The issue with this configuration is that the connection is not secure. And although the firewall rule with PF blocker and snort does provide good protection, the scheduler is still directly exposed to denial of service attacks. Another possible connection scenario is a Wi-Fi captive portal. This example provides an SSID and up to five usernames. For simplicity, the same password is used for the access point and all five users. The user first connects to the access point with the supplied password, then is presented with the captive portal. The user is then prompted to enter the name and password and subsequently redirected to a reverse proxy server over a secure connection. Communications between the user and a proxy server is encrypted, while commands and responses between the proxy server and the server hosting the XLite scheduler are unencrypted. The captive portal in VLAN 6 is configured for a maximum of five concurrent connections, and the firewall would only allow the first five DHCP assigned IPs access to the proxy server in VLAN 5. Only the proxy server is allowed to communicate with the XLite scheduler in VLAN 10. The positive side to this connection method is that the user never communicates directly with the X scheduler. The reverse proxy server provides additional security using response headers. All five possible connections would be under the control of the show administrator, who can monitor and disconnect each at any time. The power of the radio in the Wi-Fi connection scenario could be lowered to ensure that users need to be in front of your house to be connected to the Wi-Fi access point. The downside to this scenario is that there is a connection process with multiple steps. This final option also presents the user with a domain name that resolves to the firewall. The packets are filtered and inspected using PF blocker and snort, then routed to the Nginx reverse proxy server on VLAN 10 using a secure connection. The proxy server receives and terminates the SSL connection, then relays the request to the XLite scheduler on VLAN 5. The XLite scheduler responds to the proxy server, and at this point the proxy server is configured to improve security by adding response headers before encrypting the message and sending it back to the user. As in the previous connection scenarios, the reverse proxy server shelters the XLite scheduler from direct attacks. It also improves security for those programs or browsers that may not be as secure by design or configuration. A downside to this and the first connection scenarios is that users can connect from outside your neighborhood. However, the show administrator will still have control over the connection states, but will not be able to limit the users based on their proximity to the show. Here's an example of a network infrastructure. We'll briefly review some key areas of configuration for the PFSense firewall and for the Nginx server. The Nginx proxy server is installed in Ubuntu 18.4. The Nginx configuration file is located in ETC Nginx sites available and is linked symbolically to ETC Nginx sites enabled. In this file, a virtual server is configured to listen on port 443 and the certificates are created by Let's Encrypt. Nginx is one of the few reverse proxies that will upgrade the HTTP header 
of the hub bio protocol for a WebSocket connection. The location section of this file also includes three additional headers to improve cross-site security. There's also a virtual server listening on port 80, but it's only configured to forward port 80 traffic to port 443. The certificate of the domain is stored in ETC Let's Encrypt Live in a subfolder that matches the domain name. The content of the website is stored in VARWWW, also in a subfolder that has the same name as the domain name. Nginx is a free open source web serving software that runs on Windows and Linux. It is lightweight so it will run on a Raspberry Pi. In this network configuration, the firewall controls traffic in, out, and between the isolated networks. Now let's take a brief look at some key areas of the firewall configuration. The PFSense dashboard is configured to provide a status and performance overview of the different ports and services in the firewall. The WAN port has many blocking rules created by PFBlocker, and the rules that open ports are normally configured on a schedule based on necessity. Port 443 has a normal and a test schedule. The test schedule allows temporary access through multiple rules when required. During Christmas, the schedule changes to a light show schedule to accommodate the web client users. Inbound port 443 traffic is forwarded to the reverse proxy server. PF Blocker prevents unsolicited traffic from accessing open ports and shows an alert when it denies any traffic on the blocked list. It blocks traffic both by IP and domain name. The block list also includes the top spammers from around the world. Snort monitors all network traffic and is configured to block suspicious inbound WAN traffic. This blocking will be turned off during the Christmas show to prevent false positive from the web client. It is more prudent to monitor the alert logs during the light show. If any traffic is flagged as suspicious, the connection may be disconnected in the state table. This configuration maintains real and virtual interfaces. The public interface is the Wi-Fi network for the light show users. It is connected to the Xmas show captive portal. All connected portal users are visible in the zone status and each can be disconnected at any time. Hovering over each connected user will reveal some session details specific to that user. The Xmas Show Captive Portal Zone links to the public interface on VLAN 5. The configuration for the Captive Portal allows only one connection per user, an idle time out of 5 minutes, and a hard time out of 10 minutes. Links for the installation and configuration of Nginx and PFSense are included in the notes section below. Please contact me with any questions or concerns, and please remember to like and share if this was helpful. Thanks for watching.